dear friends in this video we are going to discuss the important spotters from head and neck region okay so let's move to the first slide any idea idea about the pinned structure which is located just below in front and behind the ear okay yes it is parotid gland okay so let me mark the outline of the outline of the parotid gland okay roughly this is the outline of the parotid gland fine so the pinned structure is parotid gland so the subcousins may be what are the three structures traversing the parotid gland any idea what are the three structures traversing traversing means passing through the passing through the parotid gland yes okay facial nerve facial nerve retromandibular vein and external carotid artery okay external carotid artery so these are the three structures traversing the parotid gland please remember this is from superficial to deep this arrangement is from superficial to deep okay and another possible um, subcousin for the parotid gland may be mention the applied aspects of the pinned structure okay so any idea about the applied anatomy of the parotid gland at least two things you can remember one is mums what is mums yes it is the viral infection of the parotid gland viral infection of the parotid gland and one more applied aspect we can easily remember is fray syndrome f r e y yes fray syndrome fray syndrome otherwise called as auriculo temporal syndrome or gustatory sweating okay so please try to have some knowledge about the fray syndrome otherwise called as gustatory sweating or auriculo temporal syndrome right. let's move to the next slide okay please take care this is one of the very very common uh, spotters asked in your exam okay practical exam so can you tell me the structure which is tied here the tied structure is exactly it is the parotid duct okay parotid duct okay parotid duct how you can identify the parotid duct actually right now i am tracing the anterior border of the parotid gland okay this is the parotid gland this is the anterior border of the parotid gland from where the parotid duct emerges okay parotid duct emerges from the middle middle of anterior border of the parotid gland fine okay so the usual subcousins for the parotid duct are what are the structures piercing parotid duct what are the structures pierced by pierced by parotid duct okay so totally we have four structures pierced by parotid duct all will be starting with b all the four structures pierced by parotid duct will be starting with b okay so you can remember as four b's keep in mind okay four b's okay so first b is buccal pad of fat buccal pad of fat then next b is bucco pharyngeal fascia bucco pharyngeal fascia okay then the muscle which is pierced by the parotid duct is buccinator okay buccinator muscle buccinator muscle okay then finally another b is buccal mucosa buccal mucosa or else you can simply remember as mucous membrane mucous membrane of the cheek called as buccal mucosa okay so fat fascia muscle mucosa these are the four structures pierced by the parotid duct okay and another possible subcostin for parotid duct is what is the site of opening okay what is the site of 
opening of parotid duct anybody important mcq question also okay what are the structures pierced by parotid duct what is the site of opening of parotid duct yes parotid duct opens into the oral cavity okay parotid duct opens into the oral cavity opposite to it opens into the oral cavity opposite to upper second okay opposite opposite to upper second molar tooth opposite to upper second molar tooth please remember okay upper second molar tooth fine and try to remember two more important mcq points related to the parotid duct you you will be knowing what is the another name for the parotid duct yes it is called as tensons duct parotid duct is always called as tensons duct okay and what is the length of the parotid duct anybody it is about it is about 5 cm long okay the approximate length of the parotid duct is 5 cm okay let's move to the next slide okay so any idea about the tied structure in this specimen in area actually it is one of the blood vessels the main artery supplying the face yes it is the facial artery okay so the tied structure in this specimen is facial artery okay facial artery actually in this diagram in this specimen we we are not able to trace the entire extent of the facial artery okay but anyway so this is the facial artery they they won't asking they won't ask you the facial vein but facial artery may be asked okay so the sub question may be what is the origin of the tied structure what is the termination of the tied structure okay otherwise branches of the tied structure okay and sometimes mention the applied aspects of the tied structure like that any uh, one or two sub questions may be there okay any idea about the origin of the facial artery yes the facial artery arises from the from the front anterior aspect of which artery external carotid artery okay so please remember it arises from the front of external carotid artery please as i have mentioned earlier never use the short form okay write it in full form external carotid artery okay uh, in the upper part of neck facial artery is a branch of external carotid artery it arises from the front of external carotid artery in the upper part of neck within the carotid triangle within the carotid triangle fine okay now coming to the termination you will be knowing the facial artery is having a tortuous course okay facial artery is having a tortuous course it will be running like this it will be running like this it runs just lateral to the angle of the mouth then it runs just lateral to the nose finally at the medial angle of the eye it terminates as angular artery isn't it it terminates as angular artery okay so remember the facial artery termination is it terminates as angular artery why it is called as angular artery because it is present at the at the medial medial angle medial angle of the eye so it is called as angular artery okay and so you are clear about the origin course and the termination of uh, facial artery now coming to the branches okay so the four main branches let me talk about the four main four main branches of facial artery present in the neck okay present sorry present in the face okay so when it is moving upwards okay it gives one branch to supply the lower lip what will be the name inferior labial artery to supply the upper lip it gives one branch 
a superior labial artery. To supply the lateral side of the nose, it gives lateral nasal artery and finally it terminates as angular artery. Okay. So the four main branches of the facial artery, number one, inferior labial artery. As the name clearly indicates, it supplies the it supplies the lower lip, lower lip, okay, inferior labial artery. And to supply the upper lip, it gives superior labial artery superior labial artery fine then to supply the lateral side of the nose it gives lateral nasal artery and finally at the medial angle of the eye it terminates as angular artery fine so these are the four main branches of facial artery Coming to the applied aspect, okay, one is the facial artery pulsations, okay, facial artery pulsations can be palpated, okay, facial artery pulsations can be palpated where at the base of the mandible, at the base of the mandible uh, in relation to which muscle, masseter muscle, at the anterior inferior angle of the masseter muscle please remember facial artery pulsations can be palpated at the base of the mandible at the at the anterior inferior angle of the masseter muscle okay another applied aspect of the facial artery other than pulsations okay one more important applied aspect of the facial artery is you know the facial artery is having a tortuous course okay Tortuous course. Tortuous course. Okay. So the tortuous course of the facial artery, what is the advantage of the tortuous course of the facial artery? It allows the free movements of the mandible, lips, and the cheeks. Okay. Fine. So that is the applied aspect of uh, facial artery. Number one. I have told you, facial artery pulsations can be palpated, you know the site. Number two, the tortuous course of the facial artery allows the free movements of the mandible, lips and the cheeks. Fine. Let's move to the next sp possible spotter question. Do you see one structure is pierced here? What is the structure pierced here? That is the question. Identify the pinned structure in idea. Actually, it is one of the four dural folds. It is one of the four dural folds. Exactly. It is fox cerebri. Okay. The pinned structure is fox cerebri. Okay. You will be knowing it is a large sickle shaped fold of dura matter. Large sickle shaped fold of dura matter. Okay. And the two possible sub-questions, one is mention the attachments of the pinned structure. Any idea about the attachments of the fox cerebri? Exactly. This is the anterior end of the fox cerebri. Okay. You know the anterior end of the fox cerebri is attached to the crista galli of ethmoid bone. Okay. To the crista galli of ethmoid bone and what about the posterior end of the fox cerebri the posterior end of fox cerebri is broad actually the one i am marking now it will be attached to another dural fold another dural fold which is horizontally oriented the one i am marking now called as tentorium cerebelli so the posterior end is attached to the to the tentorium tentorium cerebelli okay so take care of the attachments of the fox cerebri anteriorly where it is attached posteriorly where it is attached okay and the another possible question regarding this 
Fox cerebri is what are the venous sinuses? Venous sinuses, dural venous sinuses enclosed. Actually, there are three dural venous sinuses enclosed. Enclosed within the Fox cerebri, namely superior sagittal sinus, inferior sagittal sinus, and another one is straight sinus. Okay. So please don't use the short form. Okay. Write in full form. Okay. Superior sagittal sinus, inferior sagittal sinus, and straight sinus. These are the three venous sinuses enclosed. So these are the two possible sub-questions for the Fox cerebri. Okay? And another important point you will be knowing regarding the Fox cerebri, isn't it? It is located between the two cerebral hemispheres in the midline. The area is called as median longitudinal fissure, isn't it? So Fox cerebri is located in the, it is located in the median Already in the neuroanatomy spotters, we have discussed this one, this pattern, median longitudinal fissure of brain, isn't it? So Fox cerebri is located in the median, median longitudinal fissure of brain. Okay. Yes. So that's the end of this spotters discussion. Thank you all. Thank you all.